probably on the majority of times, the person who persistently pursues a dream ends up failing, you know, but that's a small price to pay for the incredible benefits we get from those who persist and win. You know, it's not for nothing that Hensel's favorite book was Don Quixote. You know, the, the knight, the gallant knight who tilts at windmills is foolish in one sense and a failure in, in one sense, but he's also a model for others because he, he holds a series of, of um, ethical positions and he makes everything subordinate to those goals, right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's the chivalrous knight who thinks you have an obligation to others and he will pursue those obligations even if it means that he fails again and again and again. And that's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Hmm. I, think, I think that's an honorable human trait. I don't, and like I said, we benefit so often from the, that attitude in life that I'm, I'm more than happy to put up with the times when it fails. Do we, do we leave enough room for obsession now or, or are, are we still, are, and are we too uh, afraid of, of failure? to have that type of radical thought kind of move forward uh, and, and a sort of revolution happen? It's a really good question. Um, are we too afraid of failure? Well, we're certainly afraid of lots of things at the moment. Um, uh, I don't know, I go back and forth. I think that there are certain cultures at certain times which are quite open to experimentation and obsession. And they're, you know, in its heyday, that's what Silicon Valley was. Mm. I don't know if it still is, but it certainly was a place where you could happily fail and you were allowed to, you know, the heroes were people who pursued their obsessions um, and they were allowed to do so. And they were given, they were encouraged in their, you know, Steve Jobs, a great example of someone who, you know, Steve Jobs failed over and over again before he pulls, pulls the rabbit out of the hat, you know, in the last stage in his career. Um, so I do think, I don't know whether I'd go so far as to say that um, we're always afraid of failure, but I think mm. there are times when, when specific cultures do go into a kind of protective crouch and get very conservative. And um, one of the, this is a total random aside, but you know, I say this because I'm speaking to it. I'm a child of immigrants speaking to a child of an immigrant. One of the virtues of immigration is it allows people who are being thwarted in one culture to try their hand in another, mm. right? <laughs> and immigrants tend to pick cultures that are a little more free-spirited and forgiving than the ones they're they're leaving, and that's it's why it's such a it it is such an important thing to accept outsiders, um, because they do you know they all they're they're people who who have a kind of appetite for risk in many cases, or they're people who will make use of the kind of freedoms offered in certain places in a in a really wonderful way. I don't know. It's it's, it's a um, uh, it is not for nothing that um, that innovation in a variety of contemporary cultures is being driven by 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 immigrants. Right? Yeah. I, mean, I was just talking about the Moderna guys. You know, they're from, right. Right. They're from Turkey, right? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Living in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Thank God they came from Turkey, right? 